was the biggest loser. Satan? No. God. What you say? When I read in the Bible where he says, I am, I just smile and say, yes, I am too. Silver and gold have we plenty. <laughs> On you. On you. You are destroyed forever and you will never be back. Mr. Copeland, that I call you out publicly for the false teacher, the heretic, and the charlatan that you are. I want you to know that uh, I do not hate you. In fact, I have prayed for you per 2 Timothy chapter 2 that God would grant you repentance. Uh, that God would give you a godly sorrow that would lead to repentance unto salvation, 2 Corinthians 7. Mr. Copeland, I don't want you to go to hell. I do not hate you. I do hate what you do because you have uttered some of the most jaw-dropping heresies and blasphemies and manifestly obvious false prophecies that have ever disgraced the name of Christ and brought reproach on the gospel. Without the airplane that we have that I bought from Tyler, Perry, and I didn't pay anywhere. And Tyler's one of the greatest guys. He made it. He made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help but buy it. They send him their deepest needs by the tens of thousands and tens of thousands of dollars too. But how many of those prayer requests does televangelist Kenneth Copeland actually see? Some insiders say zero percent. Red Ship investigates. I have actually heard preachers bragging on God created this universe out of nothing. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. The fossil record doesn't lie. There's an enormous amount of time between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. Enormous. He didn't create this world in six days. Popular and problematic preacher continues to mislead his followers for his own version of his teachings leading people astray. Most people commented on my post saying it was out of context. Y'all have heard Kenneth denies God's creation. Here's a strong evidence why he misused scripture to support man-made theory. I want to show you something here. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, the fossil record does not lie. It doesn't. There's an eon of time between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. The earth was not created without form and void. It had been flooded. Noah's flood was the second one, not the first one. The gap theory holds that animals, particularly the dinosaurs, were created millions, billions of years ago. And yet we see in scripture that the plants were created on day three and the sun on day four. So if the dinosaurs were created in eons past, millions of years before man, millions of years before the plants were created, what exactly did these herbivorous dinosaurs eat before the plants were created? Cheetos? You'll see the idea and the context here. The gap theory necessitates death before the fall. And yet the Bible states that by a man, of course, Adam came death, and through one man, sin entered into the world and death through sin. The gap theory necessitates that there be death before, millions of years before, the creation of man. And this goes in direct contradiction to the crystal clear teaching of Scripture. And the gap theory elevates science above Scripture and reduces God to a hapless creator who didn't get it right the first time, and so he must try, try again. It sounds like Kenneth still denies God's creation in exchange for lies. To believe Earth was made millions of years ago. Throughout the years of being a charlatan, Kenneth promotes false healing, claiming everything is going swimmingly. That's him going through you right now. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, it is. I take it. Yes, it I take is. It. I take it. Glory to God. You're not bound to this chair. The day will come you'll walk out of it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 
Now then, you guys, just help him up. Help him up. Power of God's all over him. He's not hurt. He's not hurt. Praise the God. Praise the Lord. The guy in a wheelchair still did not get up and walk. He only fell back on the ground and the assistants only helped him up. Then Kenneth walks away like nothing went wrong. Three years ago, he had tips to make the coronavirus go away, which he also made a supposed prophecy. Suddenly, the word of the Lord came to me. So I, I jumped up, ran, got my notepad and wrote it down. 924, this disease called CODV19 will be over much sooner than you think. Fast forward to April 2020. When? When? Almighty! Almighty! Strong! Strong! South wind! South wind! Heat! Heat! Burn this thing! Burn this thing! In the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus! Satan, you bow your knee! Satan, you bow your knee! You fall on your face! You fall on your face! COVID-19! COVID-19. I blow, I blow the wind of God, the wind of God, God on, you. on you. You are destroyed forever. You are, you are destroyed, destroyed forever. forever. And you will never be back. And you'll, and you'll never, never be back. The doomed speak empty words out of empty hearts. No real repentance, no real faith, no real love, no real obedience. Lord, Lord. There's some zeal in that, right? There's some passion in that. There's some respect in that. Th that that's orthodox to some degree. Lord, Lord, they say, did, did we not prophesy in Your name and in Your name cast out demons and in Your name perform many miracles? They talk about these wonders. They, they don't talk about, did we not repent in Your name? Did we not obey in Your name? Three times in verse 22, in Your name, in Your name, in Your name. You can throw the name of Jesus around all you want. You can sing it 50 times in one song. It's common. And like the charismatics Jesus must have had in mind in the future, including today, they think the proof that they are His is in their prophecies, their exorcisms, and their miracles. Did they really do them? Of course not. Of course not. You have to debate that? The Lord says, I don't even know you. He doesn't empower people who aren't even in His kingdom to do miracles to cast out Satan or, or to reveal His truth through prophecy. These are fake claims, false claims. They sound like modern-day charismatics. We prophesy. We cast out demons. We do miracles. But they have no relationship to God whatsoever. Their eternal destiny, they think, is basically affirmed by these fraudulent signs. Hell is going to be filled with people, sadly, who were involved in this prophesying exercising demons and doing miracles. A blasphemous statement, what he said was very shocking in front of his congregation. Who's the biggest failure in the Bible? God is. What you say? You know, everybody asks you, say, who's the biggest failure? They say, Judas. Somebody else will say, no, I believe it's Adam. Well, how about the devil? He's the most consistent failure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but he's not the biggest in terms of material failure and so forth. The biggest one in the whole Bible is God. Mm. Oh, what, what, what? Don't you turn that set off. <laughs> you listen to it. You, I told you now, you sit still a minute. You know me well enough to know I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell something I can't prove in the Bible. He lost his top-ranking, most anointed angel, the first man he ever created, first woman he ever created, the whole earth and all the fullness therein, a third of the angels at least. That's a big loss, man. I mean, you figure all that, that's a lot of real estate, brother, gone down the drain. Now. The reason you don't think of God as a failure is He never said He's a failure. <laughs> no. And you're not a failure till you say you're one. And Kenneth Copeland goes on to explain that God is a failure because He lost uh, His most anointed angel. And when Adam and Eve fell, He says He lost the earth. So God was a failure. 
Of course, that is blasphemy. That is blasphemy. When Adam and Eve sinned, that is not something that caught God off guard. The Bible says that the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. It's blasphemy to teach that God is any kind of a failure. This clip was taken years ago, and the latest video, Kenneth still calls God a failure. Who was the biggest loser? Satan? No. God. But if there is one attribute, one characteristic, one perfection of God that is hated most by false teachers, it is that of his sovereignty. False teachers hate the sovereignty of God because they want what God has and they do not. It is their desire to dethrone God and enthrone either themselves or a God after their own making. Kenneth is so rich he became the prosperity gospel. Teacher who owns private jets, multi-million dollar home. But there is something a lot worse than taking abuse for the love of money. There are three ex-employees who worked for Kenneth Copeland Ministries exposed his lies about reading sent letters claiming to have read. Let's take a look at a shocking reason why. It's within 90 days I started realizing this was a huge mistake. For nearly two years, Bradlin worked in the mail processing center where prayer request envelopes stuffed with cash would arrive every morning. He says a group of ministers, not the Copelands, would pray over the unopened envelopes. But Spradlin says he and other mail processors were the only ones who actually read the requests. And I, I was sitting there getting this paperwork all the day and going, Kath and Gloria don't see a word of this. How many of these prayer requests to your knowledge, do Kenneth and Gloria Copeland see and or pray over? None that I know of. This former employee also processed prayer requests and sent return letters crafted to give the look of a personal response. In fact, the ministry recently bought a new high-tech printer, which according to the manufacturer, gives Copeland a finished document that looks 100% personalized. In fact, the ministry recently bought a new high-tech printer, which according to the manufacturer, gives Copeland a finished document that looks 100% personalized. They think when they get that letter back that someone has actually prayed. Is that they misleading? Don't understand that that was actually just processed into a computer. Do you think that that is Very misleading? misleading? I worked there for six months. Nathan Boutwell says he, not Copeland, read the prison ministry prayer requests. There was no actual human contact with that letter besides my eyes, but that's okay. He gets 10,000 letters a week. But admit that. Don't imply that you read these personally when you don't. Hallelujah. He said, the former employees we spoke to also say their spirits sank after learning Kenneth and Gloria have little, if any, contact with their faithful followers. So sad, while we are seeing this experience of sorrow of loss. The next clip reveals Kenneth falsely admits he does read letters. Do you personally pray over your prayer requests that you get? Do you personally pray over those? Do you ever see them? Oh, yes. You do? When do you oh, see them, sir? When do you see your prayer requests? Well, that is between me and my partners. Copeland later told us his ministry is so large that he has to have a prayer team help him read the requests. Do you ever see the, those prayer requests? Do you ever see them? Do you ever touch them? Do you ever read them? Yes, I do. Again, according to Spradlin, how much of this mail and correspondence they see and or pray over? Zero percent. During his sermon, he spoke gibberish like if he perfectly speaks in tongues. Does God need us or we need God? God needs you saved. He needs you full of the Holy Ghost. He needs you well, and He needs you strong, and He needs you rich. Dear friends, God loves us, but make no mistake about it. God does not need us. He is the Alpha and Omega, 
the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the wonderful counselor, almighty God, prince of peace. He spoke the universe into existence. He knows all of the stars by name. He has need of no one and no thing. God loves us, but he does not need us. We need him. Kenneth seems to endorse utter false teacher. Here's the following. Without Brother Copeland, I, I don't know where we'd be. And I just want to thank him from the bottom of my heart for giving me that boost of faith kick in the pants. <laughs> <laughs> you got to believe God. And, and honestly, what a father and an amazing mentor, an amazing man of God. And I'm just so thankful for the ministry. For the word of the Lord has come to me saying, faithful. Faithful in little. Faithful with more. Faithfulness in my eyes. Brother DeWeese, my, my mm -hmm. boss on the airplane, he said, now Kenneth, this is sanctuary. It protects the anointing on, on uh, uh, Brother, Brother Roberts. Roberts. And he said, you keep your mouth shut. Don't talk to him unless he talks. Because when he's on a meeting, he doesn't talk to anybody but God. He and I were talking on the phone the other day, and, and <laughs> I don't remember really what, what brought this about, but Gloria and I were staying in their home. It's a pleasure to welcome back my dear friend, Kenneth Copeland. There are some very busy folks pushing people onto the broad road. They are the false prophets, dressed in sheep's clothing, inwardly ravenous wolves, who if you look closely at their lives, will demonstrate their corruption by their corrupt fruit. Few find it. Why is it hard to find? Why is it hard to find the gate? I'll tell you why it's hard to find a gate. Look at the next verse. Beware of what? False prophets. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. And what are they doing? Calling people to the other gate. Next, Kenneth creates his own version of the Lord's Supper, but does very strange. That's the cutting. Now Jesus said, take this cup. This is my blood of the new covenant. Just to let you know, he did not really shed blood. We did really see Kenneth attempt to cut through his hand. Then he drinks it. This is a very ridiculous thing to do, like he was imitating a priest from the Roman Catholic Church. My conclusion is, Kenneth does not know the ultimate foundation of Scripture. He does not lead people towards repentance and living in true holiness. Why do you think Jesus came down to earth? Because he preached for the kingdom of God is at hand. He warned people about hell. In fact, Jesus spoke about hell more than anyone else. Here's what Scripture reveals to us. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus was in his bosom. Luke 16 verse 23 Hell is not a fun place to be, here's why. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 25 verse 30 but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, Revelation 21 verse 8. As Christians, we should stay away from false teachers like Kenneth Copeland dressed in sheep's clothing, but his identity is revealed as a wolf unless he is willing to repent before the day comes repent for the kingdom of god is at hand put your faith and trust in jesus christ obey his commands as what the book of isaiah says seek ye the lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he is near isaiah 55 verse 6 find the true god and you will have eternal life